Hello Magical Sparks! Welcome back to my channel, it's Sparkle here and oh my goodness, I have not said that in ages. So due to burnout and slight art block, I did end up taking a small break from my main YouTube channel but now we're back and better than ever and today we're going to be unboxing some brand new Uhuru markers that I got. Well, not brand new because I got them like a month ago but you know what I mean. And here's what you get inside the box. By the way, this isn't like a review type video, it's just like me recording my unboxing process as I got these new markers and we're also going to be working on a new drawing with them. By the way, these markers are specifically the Uhuru Kala markers which actually came out quite recently I believe and the reason why these markers are like slightly more unique than their previous markers is because like the shape of the chisel nib is slightly more different and I believe it's meant to allow for some more different lines and different line weights and shapes but you know what, we'll get onto that soon. Alright and here is how the box looks and I am already loving this so much because the packaging is just so neat and perfect and oh my goodness can we just appreciate how amazing the drawing on the front is like oh it's so good but anyways here is the chisel nib and on the other side we have the bullet nib as well and actually let's compare this to my old Uhuru marker set that I got in 2021 and guess what I did actually make a review video for that marker set as well so if you want to feel free to check that out anyways here is the same type of color from both sets and while the writing in gray does look really pretty and elegant and everything I personally would rather have it in black because like just when I'm drawing and when I'm in a rush I think black is just a bit more easier to read than having to like look closer and read the gray text but that is just a personal choice anyway here is me trying to figure out how to make the marker set stand I mean obviously I could have watched just like a video on YouTube on how other people do it but no I wanted to try and figure it out for myself so there's that and now let's get on to the swatching So here is how my final swatch sheet came out and I like the colors a lot but there are some colors like this one and that one that I probably wouldn't use to color skin like by itself but I think those are good colors to like color hair or add lighting or blush or other kind of effects so, so I guess that like in a way they all have like their own roles to play kind of and also here's how the printed swatch sheet looks to the actual colors as you can see there's like a small difference between some of the colors but but honestly I think they've done a great job trying to make them as accurate as they could even though I wouldn't say it's 100% accurate again it also comes down to like different factors such as layering and lighting as well so that's that and by the way for anyone who's wondering i mean the caps kind of do fit on the back in a way but i don't think they were made to be set on the back so that's that for you and now to help me get familiarized with the different types of colors and shades and values in this set i decided to separate all the colors into four different categories i mean it's not really too specific but i just kind of separated it into a way that would help me just get a bit more familiarized with the different colors and that's that in all honesty i really really like the way that these markers were packaged like in my opinion the box is just like so pretty and it's like really portable and everything and it's really sturdy as well and then the inside is like separated into four different sections which I find really helpful because it kind of like gives me that freedom to organize my markers in a way that I want to while also not having to like organize them like one by one into like this perfect order and I just really love that about it also this is my new mechanical pencil of 2023 it's the Kurotoga pencil and oh my goodness it's so amazing and I got this new sketchbook as well and they've just really helped inspire me to start making more art again and they really just helped me to get out of my art block along with other factors and oh my goodness I just love this mechanical pencil so much so I guess you guys will be seeing a lot of this mechanical pencil in my future videos also this is the drawing or one among like the multiple drawings that I made in my first skin tone marker review video back in 2021 and today I decided to kind of honor that video by drawing that illustration again but in my current style and just kind of seeing how much I've improved. I mean it was really just a random idea but I thought it would like work well with this video because I am going to be pretty much using the same type of skin tone markers from the same brand so I thought why not and here we go starting it off with a basic sketch of the pose and then I'm going to be adding more details afterwards by the way i do just want to mention that in this video you will see my nail polish change like 
four times I think because I didn't like record this video in one sitting like I would normally do because like I said I was in an art block I wasn't really in the mood to film specifically or even draw at the time I mean now I'm back to normal but like back then so this video was like filmed over a couple of weeks I'd say just like bit by bit so <laughs> that's that Also, this is just like a really random thing, but recently I've just been wanting to make my art style more unique. Like, I feel like I kind of do have an art style, but I'm not completely confident with it. And I've just really been wanting to make my art style a bit more different than everyone else's art style and just kind of like make it stand out. So I wasn't really sure how to do that. So this time I tried to draw the eyes in my more kind of like stylistic way, which um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but like it's a bit more different to me. Like I just tried to make it a bit more stylistic. And then I also tried to draw the nose in a different way. And even when I was coloring the hair, I tried to like think of this random technique, which I haven't seen anyone use before. I mean, I could be wrong, but I personally have not seen anyone use this before, even though I mean, they might have, but I just don't know about it. So I tried to like color the hair with like diamond kind of shapes and I blended them in. And I don't know, I was just like trying to be different today. And I mean, I don't really know how to make my art style more different because when you're drawing a human, there are like only specific ways to go about it. But it is art and I'm hoping that this year I will be able to find my own personal unique art style. And that's just really my biggest goal, I think, in terms of art for 2023. That other day I was looking back at some of my older videos and I saw like how much I used to pay attention to camera angles like in some of my older videos I used to change the camera angles up for like a lot of different scenes and I don't know why I stopped doing that I mean did I just become lazy or did I just like forget about it or something I don't know but in my old videos I just like loved the way that I changed up the camera angles so I decided to use a couple of different camera angles for the line art in this video as well obviously the way I do line art is not perfect at all but I just thought why not change the camera angles up so if you do see those imperfections and flaws then let's just embrace them as happy little accidents and now it's time to start coloring I can't wait to start coloring I mean this is a voiceover from the future but I love the coloring process a lot and recently I've just started to enjoy the coloring process much more than I normally do. I think it's because of the sketchbook because like the markers blend really well in this paper so I think that's partially why but it's also just so satisfying and sometimes I feel like we just forget about how satisfying these small things can be in art but the times when you don't do it is when you like realize just how amazing and underrated these things are. Anyways, let me just stop rambling for a second and let me say that some of the colors in this drawing won't match up with my previous drawing aka the one that I'm currently trying to recreate in this video and there are two reasons for that. Number one being that even though this is a Huru skin tone set, the colors in this set are not the exact same as the colors from my 2021 skin tone set. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is that in that drawing, I kind of just like picked colors as I went and I have grown since then as an artist. I have grown just personally with how much I understand about art and how much I understand about colors. So I kind of felt like some colors didn't make sense, especially like the color of the hair. I just didn't feel like it matched the drawing too well. So I did intentionally kind of change the color of the hair in this drawing. I mean, it still is like brown, but it's kind of like a slightly more blondish brown rather than like a dark kind of chocolate brown. But it's just those small things. But in the end, I was just really focused on making this drawing the best I could make it to be so yeah that is why the colors won't perfectly 100% match up
all the markers from my 2021 skin tone set i think the color honey was my favorite because it was just that perfect color for adding shading when i was coloring skin but i gotta say in this skin tone set the one that i'm using right now even though the color honey is there i think there is someone else who's going to win the position of being my favorite marker and that is probably going to be the pink marker because the pink color that I used to color the hat and the sweater is just the most perfect pink I have seen. It's so pastel. It's so pretty. It's not way too saturated. It's kind of desaturated, which I love about it. And it's like amazing for coloring in blush, for adding like slight lipstick, for adding like slight eyeshadow here and there. And even just for coloring in pink things, I just, ah, it's so good. I love it a lot. Also, I think one of the main reasons why I really liked the sketching process of this drawing was because I did not at all have to worry about drawing legs, nor did I have to worry about drawing hands, or did I even have to worry about drawing the pose? Nope, because they were all super easy. Like, the pose is just her standing, you can't see her hands, and you can't see her legs, which made it so much more easier for me, and since she was winking, I only had the pressure of drawing one eye and making that look good, so overall, this drawing was very, very fun and and very therapeutic. Honestly, I have been experimenting with the way I color hair a lot recently because like I said before, I really want to make it like unique and special to me and it's really hard because I don't know how to do it differently. So in this drawing, I tried to start it off with the highlights and then when I was coloring the main color of the hair, I tried to like leave the highlights in a bit of like a diamond kind of shape in, as you can kind of tell. And then I went ahead and colored in the back areas behind her neck in this dark kind of color. And afterwards, I'm pretty sure I used the exact same color to add like a bit more shading around the highlights and to add like little diamonds here and there. And I don't know what I think about it. I'm kind of 50-50 about it, but let me know your thoughts. Also, let me know if you guys kind of like this editing style where I like do a bit of a voiceover, then add a bit of music, then voiceover again. Because honestly, I don't know what you guys like. Like, do you prefer to listen to my voice for 16 minutes? Because I feel like that might get a bit boring. Or would you rather have some music and captions up on the screen? Or maybe you'd like a mixture of like a voiceover here, then some music, then some captions. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And as as always, I love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Also, when I was coloring the scarf, if you look at my original drawing, the scarf was kind of like this orangish color, so I was kind of trying to make it this orangish color for this drawing as well, and I wasn't really sure what I was doing, but because I made the hair slightly more blondish, it didn't really make sense and it didn't really contrast that well so then I pretty much just ended up layering and layering and blending and coloring and layering until I got a really dark kind of brown color which I think actually contrasts quite well with the hair and the character's outfit so then I decided to add the same color for her pants as well and I didn't record the entire thing for the scarf but trust me it did end up getting a lot more darker I also had so much fun coloring in this autumn leaf because I could just like add a bunch of random brown colors and just like blend them in and I felt like no matter what I did it would still turn out looking pretty good so that was really nice because I just did not have that pressure that I had to make it perfect. And now it's time to make our character pop by adding a bit of an outline behind her and now signing off the drawing because guess what? I'm officially done. Ta-da! 
here is how the final drawing turned out in comparison to my initial drawing. I think it is quite a bit of a glow up. Obviously, like I said, the colors don't match perfectly, but I'm pretty happy with how the drawing looks today. And let's just say the character decided to dye their hair and change their outfit to a different color. Sure, we'll do that. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and liked this drawing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments again. Other than that though, have a fabulous day. Stay awesome as always. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, Magical Sparks!